So lead on leave uh, is a hashtag that we have used at Spotify since 2015 when we launched the global parental leave um, program at Spotify. And it comes of obviously we're a Swedish company and, and parental leave for both mom and dad is something that we experienced and we know how to um, also work with um, um, I would say maybe on the job succession planning uh, when people then leave for in Sweden is 480 days and uh, people usually go what and our biggest office is in US and US and Papua New Guinea is the only two countries that has not like laws or legislations of, of parental leave and where the person that gives birth have three weeks right and if you're a good employer you maybe you, you give three months so we started to work on a program where we wanted to offer uh, all our employees, no matter if it's a dad and dad or a mom and mom, or if you gave birth or not, surrogacy or adoption. We just wanted to make sure that you could spend six months uh, when it really matters uh, with your uh, with your new family member and then have one month to ease back. So we did that 2015 and uh, uh, again, obviously, it attracts a lot of people uh, that's that's never heard about that. It retains a lot of people in that age uh, if you're going to have one or two or three children. Um, what we didn't understand was um, that we would get lovely, lovely pictures of uh, parents that work for us with cute kids in a onesie where it says, I'm in the band, uh, where, with the text uh, most, most often uh, this was life changing and Daniel and I get these uh, emails or letters and and uh, I, I don't know about him, but I tear up every time. I think it's one of those nicest things. And when we launched it, we actually launched it with the White House um, uh, with Valerie Jarrett in the in the in the Obama administration. And the thing was that I, I didn't think we foresaw what that would mean to a lot of people. Uh, but the questions in media everywhere except for in Sweden was, why would you do this? Isn't it expensive? And for us, sometimes it's good to be naive and also sometimes it's good to be Swedish. We're like, yeah, but it's good for our people. When it's good for our people, it's going to be good for our company. And also it's going to be good for society and in, in the end also for the country. And uh, actually when people leave for six months, another person can get a chance to try that job. And he, she, they are not failing if it wasn't right for them. Um, or he, she, they will not take that job for the other person that went out, even if he, she, they doing a better job. But then we know. So it's a win, win, win. And we wanted to do that. The only difference is when you leave in Sweden uh, on the taxes and the government is paying 80% and we top up 200 and in the rest of the world, we pay 100%. But we think it's a good investment in our people. So um, that type of leave and other leave is, is very important. Um, but I also think that we are onto something because if you're gonna be sustainable as an employee um, and also as an employer, I think you have to understand what um, getting your rest and recharge and spending time with whatever makes you happy uh, and hopefully your family does that too, uh, has been important to us. Um, we now lived with work from anywhere a bit more than two years and uh, it came from Daniel's kind of vision five years ago, which is actually three years before COVID, right? Where he said, I think we should become distributed first. I back then didn't think that the leadership or the employees um, were ready for it. And I didn't think the organization were ready for it either. Um, but uh, we learned a lot of things during COVID and uh, all our bandmates said that they wanted to keep their flexibility and freedom. So we packaged that into what we call the Spotify Work From Anywhere program. Launched that and obviously there are a couple of things that we can't really, we can't really uh, offer our employees due to labor law contracts uh, insurance and other things that uh, is not there as a, as an offering uh, which doesn't have anything to do with spotify 
but we did that for for a couple of reasons. One, because our employees asked for that, so that makes sense for us. Two, we hope that we would become even more attractive as an employer. We hope that we would retain our people, uh, which is super important when you are lucky enough to have like the best people in the world working for you. And then we were hoping that the diverse hiring would be better and easier for us. And two, two years in, obviously the data points are very early, but uh, all that seems to be working really well for us. Um, uh, so, so far so good. But it actually also came out of something very simple, right? That work is something you do and not a place you come into. And if you're digital, why wouldn't we offer this to our employees? A couple of things that we are worried about. One is the mental health. Is it good for everybody? And, and do we need to tweak or improve a couple of things? Two, what happens with innovation and creativity when people are dispersed all over and not come together? Does it go up or down? What happens to collaboration? And what happens with that human interactivity when you actually see people and look them into the eye and get energy and feel that, hey, um, uh, uh, I really belong here because uh, I, I do meet people and interact. So that we try to measure. It doesn't look bad, um, but we want to make sure that we don't think that all the other good data points uh, are overtaking. It's called Bold uh, Strategic HR in a New Era, and it describes uh, chapter by chapter everything that is going into a company and being in a company and when, when an employee leaves. Um, it actually was written as a course literature um, because I found out that they were studying and using the same books as when I went to university um and and started hrm um and that is 30 years ago um so like and it has happened a lot within this field so that made me annoyed so i went back to my team and said shouldn't we write a book together so we did that the chapter also has a bit of a theory and and our philosophy and then it has uh, a, a practical case uh, so you could read uh, the chapters uh, standalone uh, if there's something that you mm, find challenging or you want to get inspired. So it's it's written by practitioners for other practitioners. To our big surprise, it's mostly bought by leaders or managers and CEOs. It's also bought uh, and it's also now become course literature in, in some of the universities that actually has HRM um, on their uh, curriculum, which makes me super, super happy. And this, why, uh, this is also why I last week and the week before was on a little mini tour to universities talking about uh, the content yeah. of the book. Uh, uh, but it was it was fun to write it together with the team. It was also one of those when you do kind of a mental book of the way that we do work and a couple of things that we wrote in English and then a late year later when we rewrote it in Swedish we were like we don't work that way anymore so we had to rewrite the chapter two which is also a good thing so you don't believe in the myth of yourself or your team or your company uh, that is actually it's evolving all the time um, uh, so that's bold <laughs> 